iPadOS 26 has completely revitalized what the iPad can be to a lot of people. Of course, it can still be your content consumption throw around tablet that you use in the house, but whether you have the entry level iPad or a fully loaded iPad Pro, iPadOS 26 has seemingly turned the iPad into a full on computer replacement for a lot of people. And of course, we have some awesome accessories that go along with iPadOS 26, like external monitors right here, tablets that also are magnetic and charge your iPad at the same time, and a bunch of other things that I wanted to show off to use with iPadOS 26. All these will work to a certain extent with all the different iPads in the lineup, and I'll link them down below in the order that they're mentioned. And of course, this is coinciding with Prime Day. People are having early deals as well as Prime Day deals, so I'll leave the best price down below, and now is the best time to really kind of accessorize your iPad to the fullest. Let's get into it. So let's start off with what's on the iPad itself, and that's going to be the Logitech Combo Touch. I could have just gone the easy route and recommended the Magic Keyboard, which is a great product in its own right, but for $350, it's just a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. So Logitech is going to be the best alternative if you want the one-to-one -one experience that Apple gives you, especially from a trackpad perspective. Logitech is the only other brand that's allowed to use the pin connectors in order to give you the best trackpad experience, and it works identically to the trackpad experience that you're paying $350 for with the Magic Keyboard, but at either half or even less of a price. These range anywhere from $120 to I think $240 with deals coming down the line. Like I said, I'll link it down below, but you're getting a full-fledged keyboard, and it's more versatile in my opinion than the Magic Keyboard. So first off, the trackpad is gigantic and it is a diving board trackpad. So there is a physical click down versus a digital haptic feedback click down on the Magic Keyboard. But again, if you've never used the Magic Keyboard, then this is gonna be amazing for you. You also get a full keyboard as well as a full function row, which is great to see with some awesome shortcuts like lock, going to your home screen, volume up and down. You have your playback controls as well. And then what I like about this that's different from the Magic Keyboard is that it is detachable with the case still on. One of the things about the Magic Keyboard is that it lacks the protection of the actual iPad itself, but this is an actual iPad case that can be used without the keyboard, so it can be used in much smaller situations or use cases like being able to use it on an actual airplane. The Magic Keyboard takes up almost too much space, especially with a 13 inch version of the iPad. So if you guys are looking for an actual keyboard that works super well, works how Apple intended it to do, but don't wanna spend $350, this Logitech Combo Touch is going to be my recommendation and they make it for all the iPads except for the iPad mini. And now let's go over to an external monitor. A lot of people have asked me questions about this monitor that I've had in the past, and this is going to be the Satsu Elite 16 Flip, and it's pretty much the highest end thing that you can get when it comes to an external monitor. It is 16 inches across, it connects via one USB-C cable, and it doesn't need the power or an external power source. It draws power from the iPad itself, but you can also connect a power cable to the Satsu itself, and then it'll power and charge the iPad as well, or vice versa which is great to see because of course we only have one port on the iPad, which we'll fix with another accessory. But this one rotates a full 100, 360 degrees. It's malleable, it can move around, you can have it on the right or left or even over your iPad. And now with the new windowing system of iPadOS 26, it really truly does feel like you have a laptop. So having this maybe in a coffee shop or a WeWork, and of course this works with MacBooks or anything else that has a video out, but I just love using it with iPadOS 26 and my M4 iPad Pro. And it literally just looks like an iPad on a magnetic stand, which is cool to see. And what's nice about this is that it has a few other ports. So of course you have your video in, you also have some another USB-C port for power, but it also has an SD card reader on the actual stock of the stand. So again, to each their own, I don't know if I would use that too often, but it's nice to know that they added that in there. And then on the other side of the iPad, which is one of my favorite iPad accessories of all time, has to be Kyuxu's magnetic charging stand for the iPad. Now they use this for any iPad that does have pin connectors. So you can use it with your iPad Air, your old iPad Pro, new iPad Pros, and you do have to go on the website and distinguish which one because the magnets are a little bit different. So unfortunately the M4 iPad Pro version doesn't work with the M1 iPad Pro version. But again, just get the one that you need exactly. But it basically allows you to charge your iPad Pro or any iPad wirelessly via the pin connectors. There's a USB-C port on the rear of the stand that allows you to plug in and charge up to 28 watts of fast charging, which is amazing to see. And it just acts like a magnetic stand, so it works in every single way. You can bring it all the way down, bring it up, rotate it 360 degrees as well, flip it over 180 degrees. So it's a perfect kind of situation if you do have a desk setup or if you're trying to show some content to somebody else. And I think it's amazing that they finally were able to do this. I remember when it first came out, I was absolutely wowed, but also at the same time thought to myself, I wonder why nobody did this before, but they're able to do it and it works amazingly. And the best thing this gives you is just peace of mind knowing that whenever you do pull it off the stand, it's gonna be fully charged like 
you know, any other MagSafe wireless charger. And let's get into some of the smaller accessories here for the iPad Pro or any iPad. Of course, I use the Apple Pencil Pro and there's some awesome deals happening right now. I know retail is 130, but you can find them for 90 to $100 right now. And then there are some other Apple Pencil alternatives, which I'll link down below that I've mentioned in the past. But then I do have a paper-like grip on the Apple Pencil, which is absolutely game changer, as well as a paper-like screen protector. They're not sponsoring this video, but they have sponsored videos in the past. And that's something that I just always like to use because it protects the iPad itself. It gives you some anti-glare function and it gives you some nice resistance when you are using and handwriting with the Apple Pencil. So that's something to take note of. And I actually have a paper-like tip on my Apple Pencil Pro, which adds even more resistance, making it feel even more like paper, which I love. And then when it comes to storage, I've been recommending the Lexar SL500, the SSD. They have a one, two, and four terabyte version. And then also the Samsung T9 is a great SSD, external SSD. And now with the new file management system and how well it works and how Mac-like it is compared to the Finder application on Mac, it's been absolutely amazing. It transfers extremely fast, especially on the iPad Pro because you're using Thunderbolt speeds. And if you guys do want to spend the least amount of money, go with a baseline iPad Pro and then use your SSD to work off your SSD depending on what you're using it for. But it is nice to have four terabytes of extra storage that I use whenever I'm editing these videos. I actually work off of that external SSD. And then when it comes to USB-C hubs, they are a dime a dozen, right? Because you can spend as little as $20 on one that has just a couple of different ports. And you can go all the way to a CalDigit TS5 Plus that's $450, which is absolutely insane. So basically, you just want to go with a company that's reputable, go with the Satechis of the world, go with somebody like HyperX, go with somebody like CalDigit, go with the companies that are known to be strong, go with the companies that are known. Don't go off some fly-by-night company that sells you something for $15 because it will overheat, it will end up burning up your iPad, it will stop working after a couple months. So the one that I like to recommend is by Satechi. This is a small one, a portable one that has just a couple of ports but you do have all the mainstays. You have your HDMI port, you have a USB-A port, a USB-C port for power pass-through and data, and you have an auxiliary port if you wanna hardwire in some headphones. But of course, if you wanna have anything else, just find the one that fits your needs, and then again, go with a reputable company. I'll link two or three down below that I recommend that get larger in terms of price point and then also port sizes, with some of them being on the cheaper side and the other ones being on the higher end side. And then speaking of plugging in some headphones, I will do the easy route here because it's just the best solution for Apple products, and that's gonna be AirPods Pro. AirPods Pro are just amazing. There's nothing to complain about them. They work how they're supposed to. They work in the ecosystem. They have the best noise cancellation in their class, the best of trend, the best transparency mode in their class as well. And they're definitely always on sale. I've seen them as low as $150 while they retail for $250. So definitely click that link below if you want to get the best possible deal on AirPods Pro because again, not only are they going to be headphones for your iPad, they're going to be headphones for your Mac, for your iPhone and anything else, even your Apple Watch. And then of course, we gotta talk about power. So when it comes to portable power, I like to recommend the Infinicore 10,000 milliamp hour 65 watt power brick because it's pretty much the jack of all trades when it comes to supplying power. So what this has is of course, it's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery with 65 watts of output, which is more than enough for your iPad Pro because I think you can only take in about 39 watts at a time. That's kind of the fastest it can charge. But again, it is a portable charger, but it also has AC prongs. So all you do is you plug it into the wall and it starts to charge up the battery itself. But that means you can also use it as a wall adapter. So this is technically a five in one because it has those two USB-C ports that output up to 65 watts. You do have a Qi 2 MagSafe wireless charger, so you can actually charge your iPhone as well. You also have a nice little LCD screen that gives you all the output data that you would want. Like I said, it is a power bank as well, and it plugs into the AC adapter. So you can plug it into the wall, charge the actual power brick itself while also outputting 65 watts when you're wired in to your iPad, and you're good to go. But if you want something that's just purely a wall charger that's slim that can get the job done, Nomad Slim Chargers are some of my favorite. They have a 35 watt one, a 65 watt one, and their new 100 watt one. The one that I have here is 100 watt. Again, that might be a little bit overkill for the iPad, but it is nice to know that it can charge not only your iPad, but also a MacBook Pro at full speed and things of that nature. So if you just want a slim charger that works well, that will go up against the wall and nothing's going to end up breaking, the Nomad Slim Charger is going to be the way to go. If you want something with a little bit versatility, if you want the five-in-one nature of it, if you want a portable and wall charger, the Infinicore is definitely one of my favorites. But that is all the accessories that I've been using with the iPad, both on the go and at home at the office. So if you guys do want to pick some of these up, I'll link them down below, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and let me know what your favorite iPad accessory is. Do you own any of these? Are you going to pick any of these up? Is there an accessory that you cannot live without that I should definitely check out for the iPad, whether it is the iPad Pro or an iPad Mini or iPad 10 Gen? Let me know in the comments down below. Always curious to kind of talk about iPad and all the things that we use with it. But 
that'll do for this video. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin so I know that you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.